Hello and welcome to another Starfield episode here on the Mole RP channel. My name is Chaos Mole and today we take a deep dive at the weapons in Starfield. What do all the stats mean? What are the different rarities? How do all the stats functioning later on in September when you will be able to play the game? Now, before we do the deep dive, there are two things I have to mention here. First things first, please keep in mind that everything you hear and see today is based on the Starfield Direct, on the different trailers we have seen, and of course, interviews with the Bethesda folks over the last few months. That means things can still change till the game is coming out in September. And no, I haven't played the game. And as far as I know, nobody outside of Bethesda and Xbox has played the game. So we still can only base the information we have on all the trailers, interviews, screenshots, and so on and so forth. So there is a margin of error here is what I want to say. Second, please don't look too closely at all the numbers here. The game is still two months out and this is definitely the phase in the video game where balancing is happening, where a lot of stats can change on a day-to-day -day basis. And even then, uh, we do know that when you are leveling in the game and depending on where you are in the game, you will find stronger versions of the weapon you find at the beginning of the game, right? This is something Bethesda games have been doing for quite some time. And so that means just because you see like a weapon with like this one here with 52 damage doesn't mean that you cannot find a version later on who does 70 weapons. So don't try to compare like all the stats too much with each other. They're really just here to give us an understanding what this stat actually means and not really how efficient it is. Now, with that said, let's jump right into it, shall we? First things first, let's have a look at this particular section here. This is the name of the weapon. As far as we know, uh, like in the Fallout games and even in the uh, um, Elder Scrolls game, I wanted to say Skyrim games, but no, they are the Elder Scrolls games. Um, the name will change depending on which power up will be present on said weapon. So the coachman can then be the heavy coachman or something like that, right? Then we do have the type of the weapon, and there are quite a bit of types here. Unfortunately, uh, one of the things I have seen was like SMGs. That is still something which is missing, and I'm not really sure if SMGs maybe are pistols or they are under the rifle category. So we don't know exactly how many categories of weapon types there will be in Starfield, but Bethesda is always telling us it will be a lot. And then the third thing we have to look at is this. Wait, Mo, there's nothing there. No, there is. You are looking at it. It's the color. It's gray. So that means this is a gray weapon. And there are different uh, color types. Like the next one is um, the azure color, I would say. Like the blue, greenish one you can see right here on the left side, right? And that is rare. And then we also know that there is like a orange yellow color ish thing, which are the legendaries. Unfortunately, I do not have any of the legendary colors. I do, thankfully, I do have like some rare weapons I can show off. And we would definitely take a look at that and what the difference is. But I do not have any legendaries. I would love to. We know that they exist, but I do not have any stats on them. Right, but we will talk about what the difference is between a rare shotgun and a normal gray shotgun a little bit later in the video. Now, the next thing we have to talk about is the damage type. Um, as I said, do not look too much at the number, it doesn't really mean anything. But what is important is the damage type and that it is physical. Um, so far, I have seen three different damage types, so there is uh, there is physical, right? Then there is energy, and then there is electromagnetic. Those seem to be the three different damage types we have seen so far. There might be more. I'm actually pretty sure there will be more. But nonetheless, those are the three damage types uh, we have here right now throughout like all the information which is public publicly available. And the next thing we have to look at is the ammunition 
the weapon uses. So this one is using caseless shells. Now you might think, oh, wait a second, okay, so all the shotguns will use caseless shells, right? And the answer is, no, they do not. Look at this. This is another shotgun, and you can see it's using CLL shell ammunition, which is a completely different ammo type. So we will have weapons from the same category using different ammunition types, which will be pretty important later on, I assume. Then, of course, we can see how much ammunition there is in the weapons, how many shots before you have to reload. In this case, it's a double barrel shotgun, so it makes sense that you only have two shots. And then you can also see how many rounds of that particular case you have in your inventory. Now, I want to say something here. I want to say something here. Bethesda. Please, do me a biggie here. Do not make ammunition rare in the game. I understand that it is rare in Fallout, right? Because Fallout is like a post-apocalyptic world. Everyone is fighting over scraps. And getting your ammunition there is kind of problematic, right? Whereas in Starfield, we are at a point where humanity is striving. Where humanity has so many things going for it that getting ammunition shouldn't be a big problem for any weapon. Now, I understand when you are playing on a higher difficulty, ammunition can be a little bit more sparse because, well, you want to have it harder in the game, right? And I totally understand that that is a thing and people, if people want that, they should get that. But if you are playing on a normal playthrough, I don't think that ammunition shouldn't be a problem in their playthrough at all but that's my opinion now the next thing we have to talk about is the fire rate okay i i have to level with you folks i i don't know how the fire rate works i have been trying to figure that out for days i've been talking to my community i have been talking to uh, some people online. I have been talking to two people who have like thousands of hours in Fallout and have been asking them how it works there and how this could work in Starfield. And I come always to the same conclusion in the end, which is I have no clue what this means. So please, if you have an idea on what this means, let me know down below in the comments because I'm stumped. And let me explain why. Like you can see the fire rate right here, 47. 47 what? Like shots in 30 seconds, in 10 seconds, in 5 seconds, in a minute? And I was first thinking this was minute, but then I saw some other weapons and it makes absolutely no sense. Like this one, right? This has a magazine, magazine of 6 and then it only has a fire rate of 10 shots per minute. Uh, that that doesn't really make sense, right? And you can see it also with this weapon here. Like there are some weapons out there where you are just thinking, wait a minute, wait a minute. This doesn't really make sense in a minute. So maybe 30 seconds. I mean, you have a magazine of six again and you need 30 seconds to fire 10 shots. Uh, that also doesn't really make a lot of sense. Then I was looking at how Fallout is actually doing it and how Fallout is uh, calculating the fire rate is actually kind of crazy. So they are taking the whole how fast you can pull the trigger in 10 seconds minus reload time. So reload time has to be removed. They are not calculating the reload time into the fire rate of a weapon in 10 seconds, which is a little bit absurd when you think about it because reload time is a big thing in shooters, right? And you will make a lot of decisions based on your reload time. What does it help you when you have a weapon who can empty their magazine in, let's say, 30 shots in 10 seconds, all right? But then you have a reload time of six seconds you wouldn't probably use the weapon too much if the damage is not absolutely outstanding because it takes too long. So the more I'm looking at this, I think that the whole fallout calculation of the fire rate might actually apply here, right? Let's say you can shoot four shots in a second because they're not calculating the reload time. So you can shoot four shots per second. In 10 seconds, you would kind of get to that number. Or this one, 
Um, you might say, wait, this is a little bit too slow though. I assume because it uses uh, flechette rounds, so like rocket rounds, it shoots very slow. And then maybe you can only shoot one shot per second. And then again, the 10% in 10 sec or the 10 shots in 10 seconds would make sense, right? So I'm, I'm pretty close to believe that they are just using the calculation process of Fallout 4 and the fire rate. So how many shots you can actually shoot in 10 seconds without reload uh, calculated in it. If they are doing that, oof, rough, but I assume that's how it is. But please let me know in the comments what you think. Speaking of reload time, uh, Bethesda, where is... Where's the reload time in this? Like, as I said before, this is like a massive consideration for a weapon. If your reload time is too high, then you might think, oh gosh, this weapon does make no sense for me. And again, reload time, if you're looking back at Fallout 4, it's pretty clear that Bethesda is just doing whatever with the reload times and they're not really considering them and sometimes the reload times in Fallout 4 were out of whack anyways so I wouldn't be too surprised if they just said this time you know what let's not display it in Starfield and let just people figure out if it takes too long or not but it would be a great information to have next let's talk about the range and so first, the, the first big question is, what is that? Is that meters? Is that feet? Like miles? W what is this? Um, I pretty much assume that this is meters. Why do I say this? It's because Bethesda has made it very clear that they are all basing this on NASA, right? How NASA is calculating stuff and they're calling it also NASA Punk. And even though NASA is an US institution, it is calculating everything on the metric system. And the numbers make kind of sense in meters. Like this is like a part particle beam rifle, 60 meters. Yeah, that would make sense for a rifle. Shotgun, 20 meters. Yeah, that would make sense. So chances are pretty high that this is calculated in meters. The next big question is, of course, what does the range mean for your damage? And I have to admit, I don't know. This is really something we have to test. But if they are using the calculation method of Fallout 4 here again, then even Bethesda doesn't know. If you are looking up how the range is calculated in Fallout 4, it will flabbergast you. It is, it is an absolutely arbitrary system where people just say, look, there is some range to it. You hit something. If it does damage, you does damage. Deal with it. That's basically the conclusion people came to because apparently it works in the way that there is point blank till minimum range where you're doing the full damage. And then after the minimum range till the max range, there is a drop off in damage and it's always different for every weapon. And then when you reach the maximum range, you will still do damage afterwards and it doesn't it doesn't go down anymore but even that is completely arbitrary and comes down to wherever the wind blows more or less and so yeah i don't i don't know if they are using that system for fallout 4 um but we will see about that Accuracy. Well, accuracy is actually something I can explain because we have seen it in action. And again, I'm pretty sure they're using the Fallout system here. But as I said, we also saw it already in action in the game. And there are basically two forms of accuracy. The first one is ADS, aiming down sights. And when you're doing aiming down sights, you pretty much have a 100% hit chance on the enemy. Right? Like, the chance that you will hit is nearly 100% all the time when you were doing ADS. The moment you were doing hip fire, though, on the other hand, the accuracy is jumping in, right? And the game is like giving you a hit chance on your shots. And you have seen it in the Fallout games. We have seen it in the Starfield videos. When they are starting to hip fire, the shots are not 100% accurate anymore. And so this is probably the percentage number they are showcasing here to give you an understanding how high the chances that you hit something if you use the hip fire. 
like again, this is I think one of the easiest stats to understand and how it works because they have been showing it in action for Starfield and we already know how it works from the Fallout games and it's pretty easy to understand. Now mass is pretty much how much the weapon weighs in your inventory. There you can see the mass you can have in your inventory and it changes. Like there are some other screenshots where the mass is changing. So you can actually carry less or more. I think the, the starter mass you are, you're running around with is 150. So yeah, it's just it just tells you how much the weapon weighs in your inventory. Then you can see the value. Uh, I'm pretty much assuming here again that this is the usual Bethesda thing where they are telling you the buying value and not the selling value in your inventory. When you were, of course, going to a merchant, they will tell you how much they're giving you for this item. But in your inventory, you always see the value of how much it would be worth when you would buy it. So before you were getting too excited about this value of a rare weapon, that's probably how much you have to spend if you would want to buy it. And then they're also showcasing the mods. This one is using zero out of seven. This one is using three out of eight and it's using a reflex sight, a tactical stock and flechette rounds. Now, we might do a deep dive on this at some point on a separate video because the whole mod system is pretty much in depth and is a huge upgrade in comparison to Fallout or even to Skyrim, right? Like it seems like this time there is so much more to do and so many different things you can look forward to and you can actually change on the weapon. Like when you were looking back to Fallout 4, yes, there was a mod system, but it seems to be pretty much rudimentary, right? Like increasing your accuracy, increasing the range a little bit, like the numbers did go up. This time there seem to be some real practical changes to a gun for a lot of them. And you can also have like eight mods, like even the shotgun. Look at this. This is a normal double barrel shotgun and you can still have seven mods. So I assume you can swap out the stock, you can put a reflex sight on it, you can change the barrel, you can put like a laser pointer or something on it. Like there are so many things to change here. It's kind of crazy what you can do even with a normal barrel shotgun. And again, the mod system is going pretty deep and we will do a separate video on that. Now, let's have a little bit of a look at the rare affixes weapons are coming with. Unfortunately, we have only three of them, um, but it gives you a pretty good idea what to look forward for. So the experiment A7, um, probably close to the, what was it? Experiment 39, I think it was called in Fallout 4. Please correct me if I'm wrong there. I don't, I don't know the number, but there is an experiment weapon in uh, Fallout 4, funny enough. So this one is giving Exterminator, which increases damage by 30% against aliens, which is pretty useful, but also pretty standard. Then we have Eternity's Gate. This is a rare particle beam rifle and hand loading volatile rounds that are designed to pack a bigger punch, but aren't as stable and can fail on occasion. Wow, that doesn't sound very safe if you think about it. I'm, I'm really curious what this will entail if they will just not do any damage or will not shoot or if those things will explode in your face and will damage you or something like that. I'm, I'm actually really curious what this entails and this sounds like a blessing but also a curse. So yeah, this is this is pretty cool and something outside of the box. And then we have the Brawler's Equinox, uh, probably Brawler because of the uh, bashing trait, right? Deals double damage when you gun bashing, when you were doing the gun bashing, which is like, yeah, all right. Makes sense in some weapons. I'm like, this one wouldn't probably make sense a lot on a sniper rifle because you are not really getting close quarter combat with said sniper rifle. And I'm, I'm just curious, like, is every rare random, right? Like you cannot control with affix will be on the uh, on the rare weapon. If that is the case, okay. Um, I assume that the specific affixes will be on the legendary guns. That would make sense from a from a developing and balancing perspective. 
at least in my opinion. And yeah, so far, like the affixes are nothing, nothing crazy. But again, those are the rare affixes. And this one, I'm really curious what hand loading does. <laughs> it, it sounds, it sounds freaking amazing. Now there is one last thing we have to talk about. I know we are done with all the stats, but we have to talk about this. What is this, Bethesda? Those are the melee weapons in the game, right? And the only thing they're giving you is the physical damage, of course, the mass and the value. And I'm like, are you serious? Not even like an attack speed of the weapon? Please add that. Like it's it's the bare minimum we can get, right? And if you were looking back at, let's say, Fallout, you get so much more information on what the melee weapon is doing. Also, no mods which is really unfortunate. That's something I really loved about uh, Fallout 4, that you could actually mod your weapon. Yes, I know Fallout 4 is going a little bit crazy on the modding of the weapons, but give me a little bit here. Like, I'm, I'm hoping we will get that at the release and that we will actually have some choices with the melee weapons, because if that is not the case, ooh, uh, um, I am... Um, I don't really see a future for a lot of melee weapons. Like you, you really had to upgrade your melee weapons in Fallout 4, right? To make them, to make them snappy and to make them hurt. And if you cannot do that in Starfield, I mean, it kind of makes sense. It's it's a game in the far future, and like normal pistols and all that makes more sense than still go melee at that time. But they are offering it, right? They are offering you the feature to use actually melee weapons. So I would just love them to see to utilize that a little bit more. But maybe that's something we have to wait for when it comes to DLCs. With that said, though, we are at the end of the video. Thank you very much for watching. Please, if you enjoy the video and you want to see more stuff here, don't forget to like and to subscribe to the channel. We're also doing some Diablo 4 here and some live streams now and then. And there will be much more Starfield coming out in the next few weeks till we are slowly ramping up till the release. With that said, thank you so much for watching. Stay safe. And I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.